All right, guys, I just wanted to show you on the uh, servicing of the Pro Charger, what the kit comes with. Of course, it comes with your instruction manuals and all that stuff I don't have on me. But it does come with three bottles of uh, oil. Of course, I've already used one since I've serviced it once already. Of course, it'll come with this uh, Pro Charger license plate tag, which I have not installed. It does have a, a spout here to go in the bottle for you know, so you don't make a mess. So that comes in handy as well. So it comes with an extra A-ring for your dipstick, which I have not had to use. But it's always good to inspect it every time you check your oil level or change the oil in it. And it also came with the extra O-ring for the head unit for for the uh, the head bolts. Um, one of them did have a little bit of seepage. I noticed the O-ring was pinched on it, so I have replaced it since, since I've had the uh, kit on there. But other than that, I've had zero issues. And as far as taking the plugs loose for the drain line, you're going to need a half inch and a 9 sixteenths. So I will see y'all at the truck here in a minute. So as you can see, the truck is really dirty, dirtier than normal. The braided line comes out the bottom of the supercharger and comes down. I actually did have this rerouted um, back up in the engine bay and the braided line had been rubbing on something. I, I'm not gonna go in there and look, but it had um, rubbed a little flat spot on the braided line. So I rerouted it out to the fender well and already got me a little pan to catch the oil in. Of course, it might look kind of rigged up, but I didn't want the braided line rubbing right here creating an issue. So I took some, basically some clear braided hose and slid it with a razor blade and put it on here just for some added protection because the stuff here is pretty pretty hard and thick. So I just don't want to get any damage to the braided line. I'll say it's, it's fine the way it is, but if I take this off, you'll see where it has a little, little flat spot rubbed in it from where it was rubbing up underneath the engine bay. So this was my solution to it. So at least when it rubs right here, I don't have to worry about it rubbing a flat spot and it shouldn't go anywhere. And it's actually easier to get to this way. So Again, I'm gonna have to put the camera down. Okay, so I did pull the dipstick out and I checked the oil level. It was completely full. Looked very clean as well, but I'm still gonna go ahead and go down below to the braided line and disconnect the uh, plug. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this loose here so it can drain. I, I normally like to let it sit for five or 10 minutes so I can make sure I get all the excess out of it. So again, I'm gonna have to put the phone back down so I can do this and I'll check back with you in a second. So as you can see, I do have the plug off and I have it draining. So I'm gonna let it do that for a few minutes before I refill it. Of course, I'll tighten everything back up and everything before I top it off. I basically just have this little um, catch tray here kind of kind of lodged up in between the frame and the uh, coil spring and all that stuff. Shouldn't go nowhere, but if I leave it, I'm sure it'll fall on the ground and I'll be mad as hell. So I'm just going to sit here and watch this while it drains. And when I get to the refill process, I'll be back. Uh, sorry if you guys can't hear me too well. It is um, it is a rainy day, and I'm under a metal metal carport, so the rain hitting the roof and all that stuff doesn't help. So I'm, I apologize if the um, you know if it's not as clear as it should be. Hopefully you can hear me. So I have the pro charger topped off. I've checked the level. It's not over full. Everything's just right on where it needs to be. There's still a little bit left in the in the bottle. It didn't quite take all of it. So what I'm going to do now is get in and do a little start up. Make sure everything's good to go, which it should be. Oh yeah, 
there. She's alive. The Godzilla is alive. If you've ever seen my boost gauge, I have it for it to light up. I have it on my toggle switches up here, so when I want it on, I can just flip it with the switch. Just have my my end gauge represent five star tuning. Couldn't have done all this without them. I made sure my truck was tuned right and everything was uh, working properly and got it dialed in just where it needs to be. So really need to thank them and give them a big shout out for all the help, all the tuning, all the hard work. I'll just visually inspect her for leaks, make sure nothing's leaking. Everything seems to be good. Of course, after I drive it a little bit later or tomorrow, I will um, recheck it again. So as you can see right now, I'm averaging also about 13.3. I've been kind of back and forth between 12 and a half to 13 ish. That's a lot of stopping and going traffic and, and all that good stuff. So I'm pretty impressed with the fuel mileage, especially when you're talking about a 715 horsepower at the crank. So, you know, if you get these trucks and you're getting them for gas mileage, then you may not need one. But I say I'm, I'm very impressed with it overall. Alright guys, that will conclude this video. Hopefully this will uh, help you out a little bit. If you have one and haven't serviced it yet, the video could have been a little bit better if I'd have had somebody to hold the camera for me. It's kind of hard to do all this stuff and work with your hands at the same time. But I'm going to shut the truck down. I'm going to recheck the oil level again on the supercharger after it settles for a few minutes. And then, of course, after my, my next driving cycle, I'll recheck it again just to double check. So hopefully this will uh, help somebody out, whether if you have a kit or if you're thinking about maybe going with the kit. Of course, these, uh, have, these uh, supercharger, the procharger doesn't work if you have the dual battery set up, which I've had a lot of people ask me about. So if you have a dual battery set up, you know, Whipple is finally out. There's a little wait time on, on getting them, but they're finally out, so a Whipple will work with the dual battery setup. So if you can't go Pro Charger, you can always go Whipple, but overall I've been very happy with this kit. Like I say, hopefully this will help somebody make their mind up or, or help them with the service process of it. It's very simple to maintain. If you guys know what to do, hit the like button. Maybe you'll subscribe to the channel if you already haven't, and if not, that's okay too. I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend.